بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم This lecture is an extension of, of the previous class discussion on the European integration in the 1970s covered by chapter 8 of your textbook But before we discuss uh, chapter 8 and the period of the 1970s in the European integration I would like to present you the three uh, main international factors that had uh, huge impacts in the European construction or European integration during the 1970s. The first international factor was the collapse of international monetary system, which I mean the collapse started actually in 1971 by the U.S. Uh, President. Uh, Richard Nixon's decision to temporary uh, suspension of the US dollar convertibility to gold. And then later, I mean after like two years, the whole system collapsed and the gold base uh, ended. The second international factor was the oil crisis of 1973. And you know uh, what was uh, that crisis all about. Uh, but was followed by a second oil crisis or shock in 1979 because of uh, the Iranian revolution and the decreasing of, uh, of oil, uh, of, uh, of oil uh, output in the market. And the third and the most important factor that had huge impacts on the European uh, integration in the 1970s was the global economic crisis. The global economic downturn, uh, best known as stagflation, which was a combination of low growth and high inflation. What was uh, the impact of these three international factors on the European integration well the pace of European economic economic integration slowed down there was no advance in the political field now uh, let's discuss uh, the 1970s in the history or in the evolution of the European Union. The 1970s is, is often portrayed as decimal decay, as uh, a dark age in the history of the European integration. Why? Well, the European Committee experienced severe problems as it digested Britain's, ac Britain's accession to the EC. The EC was hit by the global economic downturn, as I just uh, uh, mentioned. The whole European integration process experienced what uh, some scholar would call um, neurosclerosis, which is a combination between sluggish economic growth and institutional uh, inequality. So it was, uh, all in all, it was a hard phase uh, in the European uh, uh, integration. However, uh, during the 1970s, the EC or the European Community developed in important ways. The, the European Court of Justice generated an impressive body of case law that uh, boosted the community model as I explained it in, in, uh, in class. Second, the European, uh, the, the European community or the, the EC, the economic community, coped with the challenges of enlargement. I mean, it was the uh, Britain, Britain's accession to the EC was very, very difficult. But 
the EC actually managed to cope with the challenges of the British um, uh, membership. And also, it managed to cope with the breakup of the international monetary uh, uh, system and the consequences of uh, slower economic growth, uh, not only uh, in European countries, but all over the world. So, we've got here mixed uh, development, mixed developments uh, took place in the 1970s. Uh, this is why the chapter rejects the notion that the 1970s was a decimal decade or a dark age in the history of the European integration and describes it as a transitional period. So, the 1970s was a transitional period between the launch of the community in the 1960s with the Rome treaties and the merger treaties of 1967 and the acceleration of the European integration in the 1980s uh, more important with the adoption of the single European Act which established later on uh, 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 the European uh, community market uh, and stuff. So, I mean, the common perspective of, uh, of the 1970s in the history of the European integration proved to be inaccurate. Let's discuss in some detail the main issues covered by chapter 8 on European integration in the 1970s. The discussion throughout the chapter served, uh, serves the main purpose of the chapter, which was to prove that the 1970s in the history of European integration was not a decimal decade was not about the age. So, the common perspective on the 1970s uh, in the history of European integration proved to be inaccurate. The first issue discussed in this chapter uh, is the Hague Summit, held in December 1969 after the, the resignation of the French President Charles de Gaulle. The aim of the Hague Summit was to relaunch the European integration. It's a three main objectives. Completion, widening and deepening of the European integration. The EC was successful in achieving the first two objectives. I mean completion, and widening, but achieved little success uh, uh, with regard to the third objective, which was deepening of the European integration. Many details actually in this chapter uh, discuss how the European uh, integration or how the EC and member states who uh, 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 were successful in achieving the completion and widening objectives of the Hague Summit. On completion, for example, the member states agreed on a separate EC budget and granted the European Parliament a, 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 a role in passing the EC budget. On widening, the EC passed successfully the first enlargement, and it was very hard, the written accession to the European, uh, to the economic um, community in 1973, and 
the credits in largely paved the way to you know many rounds of a large minutes later in the 1980s and 1990s and even uh, after that. Uh, on meeting the European uh, integration uh, achieved or showed limited success. How come first of member states and the EC couldn't agree on uh, uh, on a, uni a, a, a unified European monetary system. We will discuss this in some detail when we uh, shed some more light on the evolution uh, of the European monetary system. The second was you know, the limited success uh, achieved in the regional policy. And you will find many details in your chapter uh, on the regional policy. But you know what? Even though there was limited success on the regional policy, it paved the way for adopting a more uh, developed and advanced and extensive regional policy later on in the 1980s and the 1990s and the establishment of the European Committee of uh, Region later on. The second issue discussed in this chapter was the establishment of the European Political Cooperation, EPC, as it was in 1970. The purpose of EPC was to coordinate foreign policies of member states. As a matter of fact, or as little, uh, this step was it paved the way for the development of a common foreign policy of the European Union uh, later on uh, in the 1990s after the uh, adoption of the Maastricht Treaty in 1992. Uh, but you know what? Even though during the 1970s there were substantive success than failure concerning uh, Meeting foreign policies of uh, European countries. For one thing, there was co uh, a common position uh, toward the Middle East, because I mean the Middle East at that time, you know, experienced you know high level of conflict, the 1973 war and the Arab Israeli conflict was. Uh, hot and everything, and uh, member state, member states of the EC uh, developed position towards the Palestinian issue, and there was uh, they developed actually a cohesive voting uh, in the United Nations, and now we. Uh, We've got a cohesive voting group in the United Nations formed by the member states of the EC. So the EPC experience in 1970 proved or achieved some substantive or, uh, success than failure. Uh, the third topic discussed in this chapter was the role of the European Court of Justice, of Justice in hosting the European integration in the 1970s and we discussed uh, uh, this uh, in detail in this. The fourth issue discussed by um, uh, 
chapter 8 was the British accession to the EC in 1973. And you remember we covered this when we, uh, we uh, studied uh, the, case stu uh, the case study of the British question in the European integration since the early 1950s till the Brexit of January 2020. Another issue discussed by this chapter, and I just uh, referred to it, was regional policy. Uh, there was limited success uh, on this front, but it paved the way for more development in the 1980s and 1990s. And then um, another important issue discussed by this chapter was the take up of the monetary system, I mean the international monetary system and the, uh, uh, the European even monetary system to failure during the 1970s, but uh, and we will shed some more light on this particular issue when we will discuss uh, the case of the evolution of the European monetary system. Um, another issue uh, discussed by this chapter and here some positive developments of the European construction. The role of the European Council and the uh, role of the European Parliament and the um, holding of a European election in 1979. So now let's discuss in some detail or in, let's focus on the whole impact of the 1970s on the European uh, integration. First of the 1970s to be sure was not was not a decimal decade or a dark age in the history of the European Union. All in all, it was I mean it was I mean the achievements or the developments of the European integration in the 1970s um, was mixed. Yes, there was absence of important decision-making moments during uh, the 1970s. But you know what? The 1970s, and this is discussed in your chapter in the conclusion, page page, 19, uh, page, page 187 and 188. So, in the conclusion, the chapter discuss or focus in some detail on the mixed outcome of the 1970s regarding the European integration. Absence of important decision-making moment during the 1970s, absence of major developments. Uh, in the 1970s, but you know what? The EEC persisted with some initiative despite an unfavorable environment uh, and the development or the favorable development of the European integration in the 1980 might be worth tracing to uh, uh, tracing uh, their roots to the 1970s, and this is uh, discussed in some detail in the conclusion. So, all, all in all, I mean, the outcome of the 1970s was uh, mixed. 